This week we are working with and discussing an introduction to African economic history and the recent renewed interest in it. This will really give you a sense of what topics will come up throughout the course and why these are specific, of specific interest in Africa. What I will do with this week before you take over from next week is to briefly discuss the prescribed articles. Like I mentioned before, this week is really focused on introducing you to African economic history and the increase in recent African economic history on Africa. A key thing to note is that relatively few scholars on African economic history is based in Africa. Some reasons for this include resources that are available to universities abroad, archives that are in better condition elsewhere, and the interests of African econ economists and historians that differ from international scholars. Before I turn to this week's article content, I would like to mention that I have very warm feelings and sentiments about all the authors of this week. Professor Hopkins was at one stage one of a handful of scholars working on African economic history. He is already retired, but still mentors and encourages many young scholars. He has visited both West Africa, where his main interests lie, and in the South Africa multiple times. He promotes a very holistic view of African economies and is not and that it's not about imprinting other systems on the African system. Professor Austin has a wonderful and warm personality and takes a true interest in African scholars. When attending conferences, he would more likely spend time talking to young scholars rather than the established researchers. Professor Broadberry has visited year two and works more on the British Industrial Revolution, but takes an interest in Africa. Professor Ferri, as some of you may know, was my PhD supervisor and a great crusader for doing more economic history on Africa in Africa. Some of you may have met him in international trade in 2018, and I owe him a great deal for the course that my career has taken. So our first article is Hopkins' New Economic History of Africa. It was published in 2009 in the Journal of African Economic History, or in, apologies, in the Journal of African History. The reversal of fortune thesis that it talks about is a topic that will come late, back later in the course, especially with Isamoglu, Johnson and Robinson. The thesis states that 500 years ago, Many of the African countries or regions were much wealthier than they are today. He states that poverty remains a concern for the rest of the world, especially because it has, Africa has not been able to catch up like other regions in Southeast Asia or Latin America. He covers the most prominent reasons on why Africa remains the poorest region in the world and lags in economic development. These, region, these reasons, he states, include institutions, ge geography, markets, and ethnicity. Many of these topic, topics will be covered in more detail later in the course. He concludes that more needs to be done by African economic historians. Austin and Broadberry wrote the introduction to a special edition of the Economic History Review that covered topics on Africa. If you are interested, you could search and look at the other articles published in this volume of the journal. They start with some seminal authors that expanded the field in history, especially during the post-independence and during independence of many African countries. They talk about the development of African economic history and how the views on it has changed over time. They also summarize the methodologies and data sources used most often in the field, and how these can be expanded or critiqued. The topics, they exp the topics they put forward as important are population and human capital, national accounting and economic growth, sectoral studies and trade and finance. If you are interested in any of these and would like to know who some of the South African scholars are that are working on it, please feel free to send me an email and I will give you some suggestions. Finally, Fouiri focuses on big data and how data on African history has increased over the past decade. He similarly starts with the, African, with the history of African economic history. He discusses how in African economic history you find both broad stories 
or context-specific records. An example that he uses throughout the article is high data, used by many African economic historians to explain the human development of the continent. These records, however, are often put together by anthropologists, again describing the, the relationship that economic history has with other fields and study areas. He discusses how data transcriptions are required to save data, and but how new even with new met methods of data transcription, it remains very costly. It is costly both because of time and of access. He is also of the opinion that to reduce the inequalities, a data revolution is needed. Other papers that you might find of interest written by Professor Fouri is Who Writes African Economic History? The Internationalization of Economic History, A Puzzle, The Future of South African Economic History. Many, two of these are written with co-authors Lee Gardner and the other is Professor St Stefan Schirmer. Finally, uh, the other articles that are uploaded for this week, although not required, shows how scholars and economists can de debate and argue with each other. There is a lack of consensus on many outcomes in Africa and this leads to debates. It is also that often sensitive topics are covered in African economic history and these sensitive topics and conclusions about them need to be supported by data. The free articles uploaded are, is an example of how scholars debate with each other. That is just my short summary of all the papers that you are given for this week for reading. Please use this week to familiar, familiarize yourself with these articles. Make sure you are aware of all the requirements for the course as described in the course outline. And from next week, you will be required to submit either your presentations or summaries. I look forward to working with you. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me.